Thank you for joining us to our eChurch family, MFM family, and our friends around the world. We love you. God bless you. Now you know this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And I know, Pastor, they are already glad because they are tuning into this service. God bless you. God bless you. Acts, the 27th chapter, um, verse 42 to verse 44. Acts, the 27th chapter. Um, the Lord dropped this back on me. I preached this some years ago, but right now I think it's applicable for this time. So bear with me as we move and bob through this message. Acts 27, verse 42 to 44. I'm going to look at it in the King James Version this morning. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. Somebody holla, escape. But the centurions, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land, and the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. And all the people said, Amen. Talk back with me this morning. Say, I'm floating on broken pieces. Floating on broken pieces. Floating is simply to have a, a the ability to just be sustained or supported above water. It is the brilliancy to stay above water or in the air. Broken, broken is like that that is a broken line or something that's out of course, course or consistency. It's a gap or it's just a piece of something that was left. Broken, we see it in relationships, we see it in marriage, we see it in family relationships, we see it also in divorce. We, in many cases, it's painful. In all cases, it's very painful. The wounds are, are being torn apart or finding yourself in a broken place that leaves you where it feels like you're never going to be repaired or get repaired. The difficult decision here is to make in your mind up that I'm gonna take what's left and float on the broken pieces. You're challenged at this time, physically you're challenged, uh, but I want you to see how God can take the broken pieces and let them become a part of your story and your testimony. The pain of, of loss of any kind, I forestated, is a powerful thing. But if I don't faint in the day of adversity and hold on to something, it's a teachable moment for me to grow up and to get to where God wants me to go, which is my destiny. It is in this year of 2021 that we will see pieces that we will catch on to, pieces of the promise of our destiny, going to our destiny. I decree in the name of Jesus that you have not lost everything at sea. You're floating on broken pieces. Story in the book of Acts, the 27th chapter, is a very exciting story to read. It has many twists and turns, and it speaks of contrary winds, speaks of fear, speaks of despair, despondency, hopelessness, storms, and impatience. But yet it also speaks of the grace and the prophetic words of God and the promises of God, even in the midst of a dark sea. In verse 40, if you put your eyes back there, I'm going to paraphrase around it. <clears throat> we see the ship, excuse me, and the men that were there in it holding on to something. The ship was now in the midst of the sea. Storm, it began to hit it. Anchors had been laid down for stability in the storm. But with the anchors being laid down, the ship was, was being broken to pieces or tearing apart. So they had to let the anchors go and cut the anchors loose, commit themselves to the sea and let the rudder go and realize now that we're moving in God's divine providence. The winds have begun to tear them up. They saw a shore nearby, our sand dune, and they thought to run aboard it so the ship could get out of the water. Have you ever been, have you ever been, have you ever been, have you ever been in a storm that you wish this thing was over, that you don't want to go not a stroke more further? You're trying your best just to get to land, just trying to get your sea legs back up under you. You're just so wobbly and you just want to get to a stable place, praying that you could just get to your next. 
Knowing you have to cut the anchors loose to get to your next. You have to lose some things. You have to help hope and trust in God and commit yourself to the sea and the journey that you are on. Cutting the anchor means you have to cut some helps loose. Cut some Come on, get in the message, catch up with me. Cut some people loose and let things go that you thought was helping you, but really they were not helping you at all. Here Paul was on the boat in the 41st verse of this 27th chapter. We see him there with the 276. These were crewmen that were selling with, selling with him. The waters were going opposite. They were coming to contrary waters where two seas meet, where there is a cold water and there is warm water. Paul and the others that were with them were journeying trying in this turbulent waters, but trying to get to a place for safety. Unfortunately, want to get to the place where they can just stop moving, just want to stop the madness, stop the drama. The sea is making us sick, sick, very sick. And can you imagine them in the midst of this sea? They felt like the madness couldn't stop. But finally here, they hit the sand doom and they found the boat halfway on the sand, but the other half was in the water. The imagination in their minds, my thinking is that things just stop moving for a moment, but it's only a temporary place, but it's not your destiny. They ran aboard to the sand doom and then now the back part of the ship was sticking out into the ocean. The waves were hitting it and beating it and tearing it apart. I don't know how they would feel, but I know how I would feel just to be in a moment where things stop moving for a second. And a long night had gone. They had been in this place a long time. Now fear begins to set into their hearts, wondering, are we going to make it out of this alive? Just when they thought it could not get any worse, now in verse 42, the soldiers talk about killing them. Am I talking to anybody yet? Or shall I keep going? The storm, is that's about c killing us, but now the people on the boat wants to kill us. They said, to listen, lest they escape, lest they escape, let's try to take Paul and put the rest of these, men, so these prisoners out of their misery. They knew and they believed that Paul, if he got the land, he would fulfill his purpose. So the idea was to destroy him and everyone else that was with him. It is in verse 43 that you move in the text. Here we see the providence of God and the propheticness of God's word about to be revealed. It's here that the 276 others and Julius the centurion who was determined to save Paul would not let them fulfill their purpose. Paul here now on the boat with the 276, he begins to call to remembrance God's word spoken to him, raising up somebody. God will do that. Julian, the one that protected Paul from being destroyed by these men. God always have somebody to bully the bully. He always raise up somebody to get you to your destiny. He's always protecting you and I along the way. Next we see coming to verse 44, we rested on this board. We rested in this place. Some jumped on boards and others that could swim got on broken pieces and began to escape to the land. It makes a difference, church. If you can't swim, you got to grab onto something. You have to hold on to what floats. Here they are. They had, they had a bad time in the storm, but they could not drown because the word of propheticness in verse 22 to verse 31 was spoken over Paul. And all those that would sail with him, they had to hold on to what they could hold on to. They were in a place where they were stuck between two seas, a rock and a hard place. This story is exciting to me because some of them could swim and some of them could not swim. The rest jumps on planks and broken pieces of the ship. So they all came to land safely, escaping the drowning of the sea, escaping, breaking free from the confined place, escaping and breaking free from what was about to destroy them, escaping what was about to take their lives out. But God always makes a way of escape. The story of Paul here, and Paul is now known as Saul before the great one becomes the little one. You pick up Saul's life in Acts the ninth chapter, how he meets the man Ananias. And Ananias, the Lord tells him that Saul, I know he's bipolar, but he's a guy I'm gonna use for great things. And Ananias, 
looked at him and said, this man kills Christians. He said, but the Lord says he will be a minister to the Gentiles and to kings and to children of Israel, floating on broken pieces. For I will show him how much great things he will suffer for my name's sake. Don't ever judge somebody when you see where they are. You better look to see where God's about to take them. Looking at people from what they used to be, but not what God is going to make them to be. It is here that grace is found a criminal. Grace founds a criminal and turns them into a Christian. That's right. He killed Christians for a hobby or a sport. But God said, I'm going to use this guy. Paul speaks of his own self in 1 Timothy 1 and 13. He says, I was before a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent man, an injurer of the church. He said, but by the grace of the Lord, was exceedingly abundantly upon me. He said, God's grace was great upon me. There are some of us that use buckets of grace. Some of y'all don't need as much grace as the other. But Paul said, his grace was exceedingly upon me because he knew that my tendencies were strong to trip. So he had to give me more grace and had to give me grace to get over myself, to realize that I was going to use you in spite of you. It's not your past I'm concerned about, baby. It's not your present I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about about your future. Paul here in Timothy begins to give his first Timothy's one, begins to give his testimony, said, but this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of who I am the chief. In other words, Paul is saying broken pieces is nothing strange to the Lord. My life was messed up, cracked up, and jacked up, but God still used me, and if God could save Paul, God could save anyone. Come on and give God a praise in the house quickly. I'm almost through with you the end of Paul's life Paul speaks in 2nd Timothy 4 and 7 he says I have fought a good fight ain't no wimp here I said wimp this morning he said I fought a good fight I will finish my course I'm not in this to lose I'm in this to win any fighters for Jesus in the house anybody's fighter that tell the devil you threw the first punch I'm gonna have the last one I fought a good fight I finished my course and I have kept the faith I did not lose my faith you go through things in life that will challenge your faith, that will push your faith to the limit. You'll get to the place where you don't have but little left and you wonder where is my faith now? Your faith is being built up by what you go through. He said, I've kept the faith. I need 50 people to wave at me. He says, I've kept the faith. Each church put it in the chat. I kept the faith. I've been fighting. I've been finishing and I've been keeping the faith. Storms of life can hit all of us at any time, any moment. We don't sign up for storms storms find us anytime you're on a course for your destiny and your purpose expect for a storm to come up all of a sudden we see here the wrong storm can tear up your life and break up what you're desiring to hold on to but God has a greater plan for your survival and my survival how do you survive pastor B going through a broken family being torn apart finances being broken up and torn apart how do you survive being living with a broken heart even with a broken heart and a broken mindset how do you survive when your future is seem like ravished into nothing how do you survive it's not easy to survive but Paul gives us a clear understanding of the prophetic announcement over his life in verse 22 23 to 25 he says I believe God I just need five people to go with me before I finish that but I believe God it doesn't look like it should look but I believe God. There's an angel that came and gave me a prophetic word tonight and says, you shall not fear nor be terrified. He said, you're going to all make it to land safely. And Paul, you're going to Caesar's house. I remember the assignment that was on my life when things got real bad and bleak with us financially in the church, not knowing which way we were going to turn and how things were going to be. Many were going out to pastor their own church and that made the membership kind of shift over financially and the others that wanted to go with them they wasn't with so I had to let them go and realize that Lord I gotta trust you because I'm not depending on man this is your work this is your assignment and if it's gonna get done you're gonna get it done and it's amazing how God would move one person out the seat and bring in a real born again believer they said I believe in the vision I believe in God and we're gonna get the job done where's the next millionaire at in the building that could be you God is raising up somebody but right now we got these pieces and these pieces are gonna 
to get us to where we're trying to go. He says, I got to get to Caesar's house. I got to remember that God told me that that was going to be my destiny. Searching the Lord. The secret things belong to him, but the things that are revealed belong unto us. Here are the prophetic words spoken from the Lord by the angel that you're going to make it. Miss it. Say it again. Here is a prophetic word spoken by the angel to Paul. No matter what the storm looks like, you're going to make it. It may look like you're ever going to get out of this, but you're going to make it. Wave at somebody say, you're going to make it. I don't care what you're going through. Your marriage is going to make it. Your, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. your health is going to make it. Yeah, yeah. You're going to get through this because God is on your side. He says here now that the swimmer's mindset, Paul holds on to with the winner's mindset, Paul holds on to what the Lord has said to him, even in the midst of the storm. It is God's message here that I'm going to make it that gave Paul the, Paul the encouragement to hang on in there and be stable on God's word. Today, I believe the angel of the Lord is still speaking to the house. The messenger of God is still speaking to somebody. You at each church sitting at home and you're wondering what's going to be next. Everything is run out. Your unemployment, you can't go back to work. Things are looking bleak and sad, but God told me to tell you this morning, you got some pieces. You're going to float your way to your next destiny. You have enough to get to where God wants you to go. Besides all this, behold, I tell you, you, you're going to make it. No matter what it is, the assignment's on your life. And when there is an assignment on your life, God has to move you to destiny. Talk to yourself for a minute, Clinton. When things get real slim and things get real uncertain, the Lord reminds you again, I called you. I'm the one that put my spirit down in you. I'm the one that got you out of the last trouble and I'm going to get you out of this one too. Anybody in it this morning got an assignment on your life? Then tell yourself I'm going to make it because there is an assignment on my life. The key to the whole subject is in verse 24 in the key to the whole subject of 27 chapter of Acts and verse 24 you must stand before Caesar. The storm activity was only to delay. It was only by the circumstance of the uncertainties that hindered you to get to your place or to your destiny. It was a delay but it was not a denial. You cannot be stopped. I need somebody to go with me this morning and say I can't be stopped. I might be hindered but I can't be stopped. That's why the devil's turning it up a little bit trying to stop you from getting to your destiny. Paul had to ride through the storm. Contrary winds to get to land. The destiny was on his life. He understood that all those that were with him would get to the land also safely. Trusting God's word floating on broken pieces. Grace becomes now a thanksgiving that God left something for me to float on. Even in the midst of perils or dangers and uncertainty today that comes to give you some good word that there is something you still have to be floating on. Move on Clinton. He said but 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 get it together now. Remember this. Sometimes you got to go through the storm but you got to keep reminding yourself I'm not too far out to not make it to the other side. I got to change my lifestyle. Letting go and letting God learn while I'm going through the storm and God was really in control. No matter what it was looking like, God was still in control. Floating on the broken pieces. Taught me this lesson, if nothing else, it taught me that God can take broken pieces and make them masterpieces. He can turn things around just in a moment. It is God that does the work. When you hold on to his promise and hold on to his word, God has a way, church, while you're moving through one piece to the next, he'll raise up a Barnabas in your life. A Barnabas is a son of comfort and consolation. He brings somebody alongside you and tell you, don't give up yet. Hold on and watch yourself get to the other side. God will always have somebody he'll bring alongside you that would encourage you, that will strengthen you and tell you to hold on. You're too close to land to give up. Am I preaching too hard to myself or shall I keep going? He said, always somebody that tells you, you're going to make it. No better words to hear when you're going through a tough time right now. Somebody come alongside you and say, I heard what you're going through, but I got a word from the Lord. I speak over your life. You're going to make it. You grab that one hurt word and for two weeks you're just moving on a one word that was spoken. Trusting God that if you said it, you're going to bring me to the other side. I hear the Lord 
say somebody's hanging on to last year's message last night message but you got enough to get to the other side I decree and I declare today you see land today the promise is closer than it was yesterday today you're looking ahead today you're gonna come out of this on the other side of the storm I see them now as I come to my close not understanding everything that just went through the boat's been torn up pieces are everywhere because I can't swim so I grab hold to something I grab hold to a plank of hope that thing that thing that thing that tells me keep trusting God standing there now on the island wet and cold but I'm alive talk about me all you want to but I'm still here because God gave me just enough to get to the other side it could be a little praise a little hope a little shout a little faith a little joy but hold on to what you got you got something in your life every other breath you take lets me know you're still alive and you got something to hold on to can we go there for a moment lift up your head oh ye gate and be lifted up you everlasting door lift up your head oh ye gate and be lifted up you everlasting doors lift up your head oh ye gate and be lifted up the king of glory is coming in the enemy wanted to take you out but God had Julius on the boat and would not allow them to fulfill their purpose watch this please God knows how to turn the enemy on the enemy and won't let the devil fulfill his purpose many of you are in a tough place right now many of you are in a broke place right now but you got a little I double double dare you take your little and watch God give you a lot there was a woman in first Kings the 17th chapter had just a little meal little water little oil yeah I'm gonna try my little with Jesus he's a great big God took a little meal little water little oil and gave some to the prophet the prophet said from this day forward you will never run out I challenge you to take your little and give it back to the Lord there was a boy who had two fish and five loaves of bread God gave to got what he took, gave what he took, and broke it off, and fed, the, gave it to the disciples, and they fed the multitudes. Little can go a long ways when you place it in the master hand, floating on broken pieces, floating on my little piece, floating on my love for myself, floating on my confidence in God, floating on my celebration of myself, floating on keeping my spirit up, floating on holding on to my joy, holding on to my strength. Y'all know I've been out for a week so you gotta just let me do my thing holding on to what I got but I'm making it it's a little and it's hard but I'm making it I don't see how it's all gonna turn out but I'm making it everybody walked off and left me but I'm making it I'm back in church I'm back on each church I feel God's spirit turning up like Samson moving in my soul I got a little praise don't let your little praise go out use what you got go for what you know hold on to a plank grab on to hope hold on and float away get to shore the Bible said they all came to land some swam some was on broken pieces but they made it safely looking back over the sea of what happened last year but I'm standing here today to tell you I made it safely ain't too cute to remember where I came from but I thank God I made it through the storm through the rain through the heartaches, through the loss, through the setbacks, through sad times, through down times. But I made it. Storm couldn't kill me. Had to get to shore. I see them now standing around the fire saying, what just happened? The devil tried to kill us in the water. But now we're by the fire. And up of a sudden, Paul picks up a stick that was a snake. Watch what you pick up when you float to where God's taking you picked up a stick it was a snake through the snake in the fire that's how God is that's how good God is but we're floating on broken pieces turn around and point at three people and say you're going to make it I hear the Lord saying you're going to make it all the way to Caesar's house there is an assignment there is a destiny on your life get on your feet and thank God you made it this far by faith you're going all the way clap your hands all ye people come on church
Hold your hands up. Oh, God. Hold your hands up. Say, I got just enough. I got just enough. To get it done. To get it done. Hold your hands up. Hold your hands up. Say, I have just enough. I have just enough. To get to my destiny. To get to my destiny. My heart's been broken. But I got a piece left. But I got a piece left. I'm gonna take that piece. I'm gonna take that piece and give it to Jesus. And give it to Jesus because He's a mender. Because He's a mender. I'll say it with some authority. Say He's a mender. He's a mender. Of broken hearts. Of broken hearts. Give God praise.